Hi, I'm David Ellison. And I'm Dave Mustaine, and we are from Megadeth, and you are watching the Kerrang! Podcast. You know, for me, Donington Memory, we played in 1988. It was Iron Maiden, Kiss, Guns N' Roses, and uh, it was... It was it was kind of an interesting personal moment for me because I made a kind of serious life transition after that with putting down all the partyables and the drink and drugs. So uh, I actually opened my autobiography, my memoir, with that story um, because here we're at the legendary down Donington at that time. Uh, Monsters of Rock Donington, they called it at that time. And um, But then to come back many years later, for me, this is a personal spot where I have a lot of real gratitude and a lot of thanks when Megadeth get invited back here. Um, I think uh, probably about four or five years ago we played here, and I remember standing on that stage looking at how far Dave and I had come, how far Megadeth had come, and all the huge successes that we'd had in all those years since So Far So Good So What back in 1988. So this is definitely a very personal, special place for me. You know, I, I don't know if there is a secret to it other than just you know passion and staying true to your passion. There's been times where... You know, you question if what you love to do is what you're meant to do, but I think that um, in the long run, if, if you really, really uh, are honest with yourself, th there's only a few things that we're meant to do in this world, you know, and, and I'm meant to play guitar. You know, I, I love my family, I love my country, I love my God, and, and I love my guitar, and, and that's one of those things that just is inseparable and I'll never change. Um, you know, playing uh, metal music, it's it's a lot more gratifying than playing pop music because it's a it's a workout, you know, and it's a mental challenge. You know, strumming a bunch of bar chords, boring, Sydney. You know, I like playing the riffs. I like challenging myself. The loss, of the the loss of Gar Samuelson kind of prepared us for. Um, any future losses of band members um, and we were really close to Gar he was like a big brother to us whereas Nick was more like um, you know a, a friend he wasn't somebody that was you know older than us and kind of knew the ropes so when Gar passed away that was really hard Nick passing away is equally as hard but in a different way and and the Nick that I know uh, at the end I think that um, he uh, went to heaven doing what he wanted to do, play drums. And, and I think that instead of us all, you know, mourning and shit, we should celebrate his life, you know. Um, you know, celebrate his legacy. He doesn't want people to sit down here and bellyache about that. He wants people to go and buy his pictures. He had some wonderful artwork, you know. He had a lot of music that he's done. He wants his legacy to be remembered, to support his kids, you know. Th that's the best way to, to celebrate Nick, I think, you know. You know, if you really, really, I mean, if all these people they're saying like, "Oh, bummer, Nick's gone," you know, show up. You know, we're, we're, we want to, we want to do something, but we know that his family already has something going on with a, uh, some kind of a GoFundMe page or something like that. And you know, if that's what uh, they have a calling on their heart to do that, then then great. You know, we we want to do something uh, ourselves if that's what the family wants us to do. And and if it's unnecessary, then you know, we'll we'll step back. Um, but I think the craziest thing was when we dedicated a song to Nick on the last tour. I got about halfway through the song and I couldn't sing anymore. I just started crying and I turned around and I stood next to the drum rise with my back turned because I didn't want anybody to see me. But it was it was heavy and I didn't you know with all the all the stuff that was going on at the end with with Nick uh, talking about me and in the press and stuff like that. I had no idea how much I really really love him, and and that was what was evident when. I sang about him, you know, and, and that's the Nick I'll always remember. The guy that made me smile and made me happy and was a little bit of an annoyance, but somebody that I'll always love. You know, our set this year at Download, we play some classics that all the fans know. And we have the new record, Dystopia, and we play quite a few songs off that, actually. Probably more than most bands would play of new material off of a new record and uh there might even be a surprise or two along the way special for for uh download so stay tuned
that's hard to say. I, I think that um, uh, given the circumstances, because we've been so blessed to play with Maiden and Black Sabbath, that um, either one of those guys would, would be great to play with. Uh, we are doing some more dates with Black Sabbath, um, but there's a finality with that. So knowing that Maiden's going to continue to charge onward, um, unless anything ha un unfortunate happens with them too, you know, thank God Bruce got well. But, uh, you know, I think given, given those choices, I would say Black Sabbath. Because, I mean, for me, Ramstein's not really my cup of tea. I know they're great. I, I totally see and respect them as a band, and I, you know, I, I dig the, what they've done. Um, but you're talking about, you know, who I'd want to play with. You know, who, who, to me, those guys are, you know, that's like mother's milk to me. Yeah, I don't know. Buy some aerosol rock and roll. <laughs> <laughs> I have no clue. You know, it's funny because I don't think that. I think, you know, I think I'm just kind of like a common garden variety vegetable that just rolls into the backstage area and just does my thing. I don't expect any kind of special treatment because I know there's other people here that are uh, as good or better than I am. You know, I've been doing it a while and, and you know, kind of know where all the bodies are buried and stuff like that. You know, I've read Dave's book, not having a blue plate at the truck stops. <laughs> but, you know, I, I think probably the most important thing is just be nice to people. Because, you know what, I think kindness exudes uh, energy. And, and I think that, you know, a lot of people that have heard about us and heard about me, heard about the bad reputation and stuff, you know, when they meet me, they're like, wow, that was wrong. You know, so I think that's the most important thing. Just be cool. Just, you know, if you want to be cool, be cool. The guide to surviving download Donington weekend is to have a backstage pass so you can get out of the out of the melee. Uh, I don't think probably either of us have been on that side other than driving in and driving through. And I think it's probably one of the things that, that makes it so extraordinary. I mean, when you stand on that stage and you see 80 to 100,000 people, you can almost see the curvature of the earth because the end of people, you can't see the end of it. It's like looking out over the ocean, and that really truly is a sea of people out there. So uh, stay hydrated, stay dry, uh, if you can do both those together. And uh, there's always mud at Donington, and uh, Dave reminded me that we are the Sunshine Boys, and when Megadeth play, it's usually sunny out. So that's the good news. So stand where Megadeth is, and you will have your own umbrella over you. It's true. <laughs> I'll never remind you that again. <laughs> <laughs>